Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that I played about half an hour back from now. And I was playing as black, my opponent had white pieces and started with e4 opening. Now, as always, I play the Karukan defense, so c6 followed by d5, um, opponent had got the bishop early out. So he takes the pawn there, I take back, opponent decides to keep the bishop, of course and take it backwards on b3. Now the problem is opponent has moved the bishop twice already. Uh, and now, yes, it's eyeing the king side diagonal, but right now bl black has got central control. So that's why black is slightly up in advantage. Now, before we proceed further, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon as well so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. Yeah, let's continue with our game. So I developed pawn to e6, the idea to strengthen my center here. Uh, and then open place d4, trying to reinforce the center. I got my bishop over to d7. This is a new thing which I'm trying to do these days. Uh, this does actually prevent a move like uh, bishop to uh, a4. Or in some, in some cases, once pawn to c3 is played, it prevents queen as well coming to a4. So eyeing your bishop towards the wrong diagonal also can work out. And it's not that bad actually once you place it back on c6. That strengthens your pawn structure as well, protects b7 as well. So it's kind of a good move. Then you can take out a knight over to d7 and then hop on towards the side wherever open castles. Here my opponent responds with knight e2. I go with bishop over to d6, developing the dark square bishop. Opponent castles. I get my knight over to c6. Uh, because I didn't see any threats coming on to b7 straight away, so knight came out on c, uh, c6 there. Opponent plays c3, just so, uh, trying to make sure that the bishop also can be routed back and attack the h7 eventually. And then uh, opponent responds, then I play uh, queen over to c7, just eyeing the pawn over there on the h2 with a battery. And opponent could have actually played the pawn forward here, but he decides against that and plays bishop over to c2, just trying to hit the pawn on h7, which was of no use right now. Maybe assuming too early that I'll develop the knight and castle on the king's side, because once I do castle, opponent can get the queen as well over to uh, e3, and the generic idea is to have the lights, battery, and checkmate over h7. But that was too early to do, and I take on the pawn. And then I just come back with the bishop. And then Opendale loves the knight, trying to maybe acquire f3 next. I went on with my development knight to f6. Now, uh, just finishing off my minor pieces development and also making sure that the knight can hop in, in the center if required, or even to g4. That can be also a good square because my battery is already nice. Maybe I can just move my bishop out of the way and then check, try and checkmate over h with the help of my knight and queen. So that was the plan there. And then my open plays knight to b3. Now I can castle either side of the board or what I can do is play pawn forward, h5. Going with my pawn army there next. I'm not going to stop this pawn. I'll keep attacking you on the king side because the king is wide open right now. That's a huge target. And of course I can castle on the queen side if required or maybe king to e7 is not bad at all. My opponent plays f4 there, again weakening up more uh, of his king side, but that is played to prevent me from taking on the pawn because now knight, rook, and the bishop, all three are defending the pawn and he closed my diagonal as well. But that doesn't hurt me because I'm going ahead with the pawn on h4. My opponent plays rook to f3, trying to maybe play rook over to h3 next so that he can block my pawn. Uh, but then I had ideas of playing pawn forward maybe eventually after maybe moving my bishop away because otherwise if I play it straight away, I lose uh, the bishop as well or the knight. So I can just move my bishop backwards and then maybe play pawn forward hitting the rook with the bishop. Here I went on with h3 trying to make sure that he has to take. Uh, now he can take with anything that he wants to. I'll just turn on the engine evaluation as well and the best moves. Now, the best move here is to take with the rook or the pawn. Computer is also confused so far. 
still calculating. But anyway, he took with the pawn. And then what happens next is I just cast on the queen side. Doesn't matter what your opponent is doing now because I have a huge target. The king is not safe at all. Then knight comes in trying to attack my bishop. Uh, but I'm okay with that. I just try to double up there. Opponent takes the bishop. I take back with the queen. Then opponent tries to get the bishop, trying to pin the knight, but that's of no use. I'm not using that piece anyway. I'm just doubling up with my attack on the rook king side. Opponent tries to save that with the king now. And I just went with knight to g4. Of course, the knight cannot be taken because of the pin of the rooks. So opponent has to now go back or try to find a good square for his king. If he, of course, anywhere he goes, I want to take this pawn next and that is going to be disastrous. Opponent tries to now place king to g3. Uh, I don't know what was the plan here because I can take the pawn and opponent has to move again. Again, this would have been bad if he tries to take the knight because after knight takes, uh -oh, the rook comes in and then there's only one move and then bishop or queen both can uh, and participate in a checkmate. So he cannot take the knight now. He has to go back and I just try and attack with the rook. And if he now goes back again, he loses the queen. So he comes back now and that forces him to now take the knight. And then I found the right checkmating pattern, placing f3 first, f5, sorry, just trying to check the king again. Opponent king has to move and he has got only one square. There's no other option. So king g5, and then I give a check with queen e7. Then opponent has to play king to g6, the only move, and that's checkmate with the queen on f6. So that's how you can build up onto the attack once your pieces are lined up pretty nice. So uh, always try and remember that edge, uh, once the opponent has castled on either side of the board, the corner pawns are generally weak. Try and take advantage of that. Then rook lifts are certain, which help you in building up a position further. And then try to have more attacking pieces towards the king rather than keeping everything on different sides of the board. Attack from one side of the board. If you notice here, I didn't move my A and B pawns. They were solid there. Knight was standing there to just to have a defense of the H A7 as well. And then my bishop, dark square bishop, is also lined up on D6 here. Controlling the diagonals can come back as well. And it's nice and solid structure on the queen side. But what happened on the other side of the board was destruction. Knight into the attack, rooks attacking, queen attacking, pawn sacrifices, pawn attacking. So all attack on one side of the board, focusing in the right direction. I hope it was instructive enough. And that brings some good change in your gameplay as well. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow again with some interesting video of mine. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.